After watching my hunter's guide, you may be left wondering what perks and add-ons to use. Well, congratulations, you've landed on the right video, so look no further. Huntress is an extremely flexible killer, varying in different playstyles. It's what makes her so unique. You can use so many different perks and add-ons based on how you play her. With that being said, everything in this video is based on my own opinions. You can use whichever perks works for you. This video is simply here to guide you on what may work better. Diving into perks first, the most popular are what I refer to as info perks. Their perks focus on aura reading and giving you information on survivor locations. Perks such as barbecue and chili, bitter murmur, lethal pursuer, and so on. The second most popular are chase related perks, such as brutal strength. The third set that are useful on Huntress and all killers for that matter are of course slowdown perks. And if you need an example, the most popular being hex ruin. Last but not least, we have a group of perks we will simply call other due to their lack of similarity to the others like the good old Forbidden Shadowborn. Starting off with the first group, which is commonly used info perks. This includes perks such as Barbecue and Chili, I'm All Ears, Bitter Murmur, Lethal Pursuer, Nurse's Calling, and the newest perk as of patch 5.6.0, which was the release of the Onryo, or Sudeiko, Scourge, Floods of Rage. All of these perks give you specific information in the form of auras on the survivor locations and combine perfectly with Huntress's long range ability. You can use the auras as simple information allowing you to make more educated decisions on where to go next or be even more direct by using the information to hit long range hatchets. This is a favorite among good Huntress players as it allows them to go for hatchets that are otherwise difficult and random. Personally, I like to use barbecue and chili simply because of the information it offers along with the bonus blood points. Other perks that give you information on survivor locations without auras would be discordance, whispers, thrilling tremors, and rancor. The second set of perks is a less conventional set, but also very strong. Chase perks are perks that aid you in chase, such as brutal strength to kick pallets faster, bamboozle for a faster window vault and entity blocker, and enduring for a 50% faster stun recovery. While not remarkably uncommon, they are extremely underrated, especially Brutal Strength. The most common counter to Huntress is throwing pallets early, and Brutal helps tremendously mitigate that counter by allowing you to get rid of the pallet faster. Bamboozle is a second option. Although it isn't a perk I would use due to Huntress's prevalent window denial, it can help end chases faster by removing the survivor's usage of windows. Personally, I think Brutal Strength is the best one in this category. And now our favorite, the third set of perks being slowdowns. Many people may choose not to run slowdowns on killer, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, with MMR being out now and many survivors choosing to play more optimally, along with stronger builds, you may find that as you improve, slowdowns eventually become necessary. The most popular slowdowns have been Corrupt Intervention, Hex Ruin, Pop Goes the Weasel, and even Thanatophobia for a long time. However, with the release of Scourge Hooks, The Trickster's No Way Out, and Pinhead's Deadlock, the meta has been shaking up with these newer perks increasing in popularity. Not to mention, Deadman Switch's major buff has probably made it one of the best slowdowns in the game as of patch 5.5.0. Some may say that Deadman Switch has even replaced Deadlock, and I would agree, but these two are also a great power duo. Firstly, let's talk about Corrupt Intervention. It blocks the three furthest gens away from you when you spawn for 120 seconds. It is by far the best slowdown on Huntress, along with being the most fair slowdown. It is such a useful perk not only on Huntress, but any killer that has 110% movement speed. Larger maps can be extremely hard for Huntress to start off on, and without Corrupt, a gen or two may even be finished without a down. Corrupt even has the added benefit of giving you a rough idea of where survivors spawn, which can help you get into a chase sooner. It's such a staple perk for any modern day build. Moving on to the infamous Hex Ruin, Ruin will cause any generator not actively being worked on to regress by 200% without the need to kick it. This is helpful in an obvious way, but it isn't a favor of mine due to Huntress's slow map mobility. You may be thinking, hey, I can just throw hatchets at them, but you still won't deter survivors from finishing a gen in your face. Unfortunately, Huntress is just too slow to interrupt gens enough to make good use of Ruin before it's inevitably cleansed. Pop Goes the Weasel is a fantastic perk to throw in the garbage. Just kidding. 
Once you hook a survivor, pop will activate, giving you a 45 second window to kick a generator and remove 25% of its progress. However, pop requires you to get a down, hook the down survivor, kick a gen, then pick up another chase, and so on. Due to the slow movement speed of Huntress, this can be extremely inefficient. Don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic perk on higher mobility killers, but on Huntress, you won't see value very often. During my pop experiment where I played Huntress with pop for 5 games, I got an average of 4.6 kicks per game. Don't get me wrong, that is pretty much an entire generator's worth of progression lost. However, it's not really worth walking across the map as a 110 killer to kick a generator to dust. It's generally not worth it because survivors will figure out that you have pop and spread out, which is deadly for Huntress. A fantastic alternative would be Deadman Switch or Deadlock. Fanatophobia! Are you afraid of dying? Simply become invincible. Fanatophobia is a great perk on killers who can injure people very quickly. It applies a staggable 5% penalty up to a max of 20% to survivors who are injured, in a dying state, and or hooked. Good examples of killers who will see a lot of value from this perk are Nurse and Blight. Huntress, on the other hand, won't see as much value since people will typically be spread out. Grouping up against Huntress can be extremely dangerous and typically happens in Endgame where Thanatophobia is most unhelpful. Let's quickly talk about No Way Out. Released with the Trickster back in patch 4.6.0, it is in my opinion the strongest Endgame slowdown in the game. When you hook a survivor for the first time, you get one token up to a maximum of four tokens. Once a survivor powers the exit gates, the entity will block both gates for 12 seconds with an additional 12 seconds per token, up to a combined maximum of 60 seconds. Endgame slowdown perks are quite a niche category, including perks like Blood Warden, No One Escapes Death, and Remember Me. None of these perks work quite like No Way Out, and it's why I think it's the best, sitting right beside No Way. It's a great endgame insurance perk for any killer. Last but not least, let's get into Scourge slowdowns. With Pain Residence being the latest buzz in the community, everyone has been enchanted with the strength of it. But what does it really do and how much value do you really get out of it, especially on Huntress? Pain Resonance requires you to hook a survivor on one of four specific Scourge hooks scattered throughout the map. Each time a survivor is hooked on a Scourge hook, the generator with the most progress explodes and loses 15% of its progress, followed by base speed regression. Survivors working on it will also scream, revealing their location. It sounds like a fantastic perk! However, to get value out of this perk, you'd have to consistently hook survivors on one of four Scourge hooks, which may not always be available to you. This brings me to talk about the current meta combination of Dead Man's Switch and Pain Resonance, which in my opinion offers way more value than Pain Resonance on its own. This power duo is great if you want more meddling slowdown and two free slots for barbecue and corrupt, or any of the perks that you'd prefer. Moving on, we approach our final perk category, which is Other. This includes common picks such as Shadowborn, Iron Maiden, Blood Warden, and Agitation. The first three of these are common choices, however, I prefer to avoid them. Shadowborn takes up a perk slot that literally only gives you field of view, and it's really not useful, but more so of a comfort perk. Iron Maiden is also not particularly useful, unless you find yourself reloading often during chases, which you shouldn't have to do unless you're missing a lot. If you're missing a lot, you should simply not do that. In all seriousness, reloading takes 4 seconds. Iron Maiden cuts that in half to 2 seconds. If you reload 20 times in a 15 minute game, you saved yourself 40 seconds. That is slightly over 4% of the time spent in that trial. It's very little. Blood Warden is next in the list, and while it does have value, it only has value if you get a hook in a very specific situation that you really don't want to be in anyway. Not to mention, it's easily counterable as most people in 99 gates and will leave when they notice a killer trying to waste time during a new collapse. This perk is more of a for fun perk in my opinion. Last but not least, Agitation. Agitation is a perk that many people are going to question, and rightfully so. I just spent a minute telling you how Iron Maiden isn't worth bringing due to the little amount of time it saves you, and I stand by that. So how can I now say Agitation is worth bringing despite it definitely saving you less time? The biggest value of Agitation is the range you can carry people. It allows you to take control of where survivors will be, repositioning where the action is. All the gens finished on one side of the map, but you down someone there? Agitation is the solution. You can now carry that survivor back towards uncompleted gens. This allows you to pressure that unhook and gens at the same time. 
In summary, I think you should always have at least one info perk and one slowdown if you want the best chance of 4k'ing every game. I recommend Barbecue and Chili along with Corrupt Intervention as those are the two perks that I virtually never take off. I choose to pair Dam and Switch and No Way Out with them, but the last two perks can be entirely up to you. I have given you my opinion on all the common perks used, but remember, it's simply my opinion. You are more than welcome to form your own. Now that we covered perks, let's move on to add-ons. Huntress has many useful add-ons that provide utility in many different ways. She has aura reading abilities, faster wind-up, faster recovery, faster reload, faster flight speed, along with other more specific abilities. I'm going to start off with add-ons I don't think are very useful. Horse Stone increases survivors' grunts of pain by 50% when they're hit by a hatchet. Amanita Toxin inflicts survivors with a status effect blindness for 60 seconds, which prevents them from seeing auras. Both of these add-ons are practically useless, and out of 20 add-ons, these are definitely ones you want to discard. Shiny Pin changes your movement speed while holding a hatchet wound up from 77% to 82.5%. I don't find that the small increase in speed is worth it, especially when Babushka exists. It's not a terrible add-on, but I don't think it's valuable for my kind of playstyle. Weighted Head inflicts incapacitated for 10 seconds, which blocks survivors from doing objective-based actions for 10 seconds. I don't think this is useful. Rusty Head inflicts the mangle status effect on survivors when hit with a hatchet. This is like Sloppy Butcher, but for hatchets. It definitely has value, but it's honestly not useful to me. Begrimed Head does the same thing, but tags the hemorrhage status effect on top of it, which just makes you leave blood pools more often. Wooden Fox is practically useless. It will work on newer players and is more of a for fun add-on. Huntress has a static 45 meter lullaby, and the undetectable status effect will only remove your terror radius for 30 seconds after reloading. Just another add-on to discard. Soldier's Putty increases your movement speed from 110% to 115% when you have no hatchets. Moving faster is obviously useful, but in order for this add-on to have any value, you have to essentially not have a power. This is obviously a massive downside. I never use this add-on because I don't have fun playing Hunters without hatchets. This is another one of those for fun add-ons. Last but not least is the highly controversial Iridescent Head. After the nerf, this add-on is no longer as strong as it used to be, but can still be slightly annoying to go against. Simply put, it isn't a fun add-on for anyone. The appeal of Huntress is throwing and hitting hatchets, and Eerie Head simply makes it less often that you hit hatchets. Who wants to reload after one throw? This isn't Call of Duty. So by now, you may be wondering what add-ons are left. Surprisingly, there's still a few left. These are the add-ons that I do find useful. One of my favorite groups of add-ons is the two that give wind-up speed, Flower Babushka and Mana Grass Braid. Babushka reduces wind-up speed by 12%, while Mana Braid reduces it by 8 I wouldn't run these two together, just one or the other paired with one of the add-ons that reduce the cooldown between hatch throws, which are Oak Haft and Bandaged Haft. Oak Haft is the better of the two, reducing the cooldown duration by 20%, and Bandaged Haft reducing by 10%. These add-ons are extremely useful for throwing hatchets quicker or m one and grabbing survivors. The best part? They're both pretty common in bloodwebs. Another honorable mention and something I always use is increased maximum hatchets. Infantry and leather loop both increase your hatchet inventory. Infantry belt increasing by two and leather loop increasing by one. Once again, I never pair these together, opting for a better combo like Infantry Belt and Oak Haft, popularized by another great Huntress main and streamer, Ralph. Yuck. I've already spoken about my opinion on reload speed, and you may be wondering why I'm including deerskin gloves in the section of add-ons I would use. Reload speed is not particularly valuable, but sometimes you just want to throw a massive amount of hatchets, especially when you're learning. Using an add-on slot to accomplish that is far better than using a perk slot. A great duo would be Infantry Belt and Deerskin Gloves, and it can be pretty fun too. Glowing Concoction allows you to see the aura of a survivor for 5 seconds after hitting them with a hatchet. This allows you to quickly two-tap survivors, especially at a distance. This add-on can be extremely fun to run, especially with Ocaf to recover faster and throw a second hatchet. Infantry Belt is great too. Flight Speed is an incredible set of add-ons. It increases your hatchet's flight speed, but it also means you need to adjust your ability to lead targets. Rose Root increases flight speed by 20%, while Yellowed Cloth increases flight speed by 10%. Either of these add-ons combined with Babushka is extremely strong, but I prefer not to use them. Last but not least, drumroll please. 
Venomous Concoction Once a survivor is hit with a hatchet, they will suffer from exhaustion for 5 seconds. This means any survivor hit by a hatchet with this add-on with an exhaustion perk will prevent them from using it, unless they can manage to walk for 5 seconds in chase. I think this add-on is pretty good if you're tired of dealing with dead hard primarily. In my opinion, the best two add-ons for strength that don't involve Eerie Head are Babushka No Caft or Flight Speed and Babushka. Additionally, I think any of the add-ons that I listed and the add-ons I find useful are very viable and also fun to use. Feel free to mix and match to find the pair that you like best and leave a comment telling me about it. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video and I hope you have fun chucking hatchets. See you next time.